Go to Luke 3.16. I like John 3.16, but once you get to know John 3.16, you need to get to know Luke 3.16. And John answered them all by saying, I baptize you with water. Anybody in here been water baptized? Anybody in here today that has not been water baptized that wants to be water baptized? Right here? Raise your hand high. How many have not been water baptized that want to be water baptized? Raise it high. One, two, three. Three, four. We're baptizing them today. Whatever it takes, we're bap. Y'all want to be baptized today? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> somebody somebody want to go run to water now in the bathtub? We're going to baptize you. We're going to baptize you today. We got to change the clothes for them somehow, some way? No. I'll go get mine. There's no way to stop up the tub. It's like a default. The sink. Put a um rag in there. Yeah, put a rag in there. I don't care. Put a rag in there. 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 Put the word? Danny's. Oh, Danny's. Danny's house? That's what he, I got. He's in the hot tub anytime. So I got baptized. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Baptize him in the hot tub. Okay. You got four. That's tomorrow, bro. We'll, we'll set it up after this. I'll take everybody's name who wants to be baptized and everything. Y'all not going to skip out because it's 24 hours, right? And we'll make it into a thing. You know what I mean? We'll do hot tubs or... Something. What, what, do, what do we need can to you, work? Can you get baptized tomorrow? Hey, Adam. Can you get baptized tomorrow? Can you? Can you? Okay. Adam. Raise your hands high again. Let's let everybody look at everybody. Look at these hands. These guys are getting baptized tomorrow. Let's give them a hand clap. Woo! Woo! All right. <laughs> He's like waving the queen. Wave. Well, and let y'all know, like Dustin has been baptized in it. Like we've yeah. done it already once. All right. So, but that's not what we're talking about tonight. Tonight we're talking about a different kind of baptism, different kind altogether. In Luke three sixteen, he says this. John answered them all by saying, "I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming." Water baptism is powerful, but Holy Ghost baptism is more powerful. Because the one doing it is more powerful. Jesus is baptizing you with the Holy Ghost when you get Holy Ghost baptized. But he who is mightier than I that is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not fit to unfasten, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Holy Spirit, you be baptized with fire, you're not awesome. Baptized in fire it is and come out. Woo! It's awesome. Like you're you're like the human torch on Fantastic Four. Have you seen that guy before? You can fly and shoot fireballs out. Okay. Let's come back to Acts chapter two, verse four. Acts chapter two, verse four. So these tongues of fire came and settled upon each of them. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Anybody not see that right there? When you ask to be baptized, when, I'm sorry, when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you will speak with other tongues. You will speak in these other languages the perfect will of God. I told you the title of this message was 26 Reasons Why Every Believer Should Speak with Other Tongues. I'm going to go quick. You're not going to have time to turn to all these places in Scripture. 
I'm going to leave this message with Pastor Adam. If you've got pen and paper, write them down. Get the notes. But I want you to hear 26 reasons why God wants you Holy Ghost filled. Hey, you don't have to write it down now. Oh. I'll leave it at the end if you want them. Just come get them from me. All right. Number one, it was prophesied that you would speak in other tongues. You're just simply fulfilling a prophecy that was given. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 21, it says, In the law, and this is a quote of Isaiah 28, 11, and 12, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. So some people refuse it. Some people reject it. Religious people don't want anything to do with it. But Holy Ghost people want to speak with other tongues. Number two, it's a sign to unbelievers. 1 Corinthians 14 and 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Imagine if you're a Latino and you're walking down the street out here, and all of a sudden, uh, Tommy, he's walking down the street speaking in tongues under his breath. And he's like, Oh, Jesus Christ is living in my heart. Oh, glory to God. La palabra es mucho gusto. And he's just speaking in tongues, and it's Spanish tongues that he doesn't know. But he's just speaking it out because the Holy Ghost has given him what to say. And this Latino guy walks up to him and says, I didn't know you spoke Spanish. He's like, I didn't know either. Was that Spanish? He's like, yeah. He said, like, how do you speak Spanish? Dude, it's God. He's like, do you know what you were saying in Spanish? No. He's like, you were saying, Jesus is living in your heart. and The Word of God is wonderful. And you don't know Spanish? No, man, I don't know Spanish. Oh my gosh, God is real. You don't even know the language and you were bragging on it. So tongues are for a sign to people that don't believe in God. You want to freak somebody out, start speaking in their language and you don't know their language. Isn't that something? And that's happened many times. Turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. In verse 6. When this sound was heard, the multitude came together, and they were astonished and bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were beside themselves with amazement, saying, Are not all these who are talking Galileans? How is it that we hear them in all of our languages? And then they go on and they name the languages that they were speaking in. Even though they knew they didn't know these languages. They're like, these guys are from Galilee. And they're speaking Parthian, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamian, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, around Cyrene, the residents of Rome, the Jews and the proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them speaking in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Isn't that awesome? You want to just mess somebody's mind up. Walk up to one of your African friends and start speaking in tongues, and it be Twi or Nyanja or Bimba. Yeah. <laughs> That'll rock somebody's world, won't it? And the whole time you're talking about God. And then, and then they start speaking like, I didn't know you spoke African. I didn't either. Was that what, was that what I was speaking? <laughs> the tongues are for a sign of people who don't believe. All right, the next thing is it says, when you pray in other tongues, you speak blessings out. Anybody like it when somebody speaks a blessing to you? Anybody like to be blessed? How would you like to speak blessings out in other languages? Pretty good stuff. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15, What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, which is praying in other tongues, and I will pray with the understanding, which is praying with your mind. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. Else, when, when you bless with the Spirit, how are they going to understand? So, when you, when you sing or speak in, the, in tongues, you're 
you're speaking blessings. Okay? The power of life and death is in your tongue. You either bless or you curse. Now, the next reason is it says that you also give thanks when you speak in other tongues. You ever had God something do something in your life that was so powerful that you just couldn't find words to express how grateful you were for what He had done for you? You ever been there before? I mean, thanks God, just didn't quite do it. Anybody? Nobody's ever been at the place where they wanted to think, well, then we definitely need to get you Holy Ghost filled because that's where the miracle starts. Everybody ever, ever witness a miracle in here? Blake, I heard you talking about Christmas. I heard you say it's the best one yet. Wouldn't it be great to tell God how thankful you were right from your spirit, not just from your mind, but from your spirit, how grateful you were for the Thanksgiving He just gave you? I think that'd be cool. Moving on, it says um, you, you can interpret what you pray in other tongues, and when you do, you're prophesying. How many of you would like to be speaking in a foreign language that you knew you didn't know, and but then be able to interpret it and know exactly what you were talking about? Anybody? Kendria? Anybody? I mean, how cool is that? Like you're saying, you're saying, uh, like in India, I'd say, Bhagana, uh, Ibhaganuna. That's that's uh, the Indian dialect, you know, over India, Asia, not Indian. That's, how are you? Well, hi, hello, I'm fine, how are you? That's what I just said. How'd you like to know that's exactly what you said when you didn't even know the language? Well, you can, the Bible says you can. One of our next reasons is, is 1 Corinthians 14 and 13. Let he who prays in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. That's 1 Corinthians 14 and 13. How do you know the interpretation to what you're praying in other tongues? Well, you simply ask God for it. And then pay attention to the pictures that come across the screen of your mind or the words in English that you hear in your heart. I'm going to give you an example. I was playing college basketball 100 years ago, 50 pounds ago, I mean, um, in 1992, excuse me. In 1992, I was playing my last home college basketball game over in North Carolina. I was coming out of the training room, and I just got my ankles wrapped. And I'm walking down the hallway to go into the locker room to put the rest of my warm-ups on and my tennis shoes. And as I'm walking down the hallway, the Holy Spirit says to me, jump over in that film room right there, the football film room. There's classrooms all down the hallway. Jump in that room over there and pray. I said, Lord, come on now. I got 20 minutes till the game starts. I still got to get the rest of my clothes on. And you want to have a prayer meeting? Come on. Do you not have a watch? You know, I know you can see them up there bouncing the balls right now. I need to get up there. He, God's not going to argue with you. He tells you, go pray, go pray. So I went in there in that room, just very reluctantly. I sat down in the chair. And since he didn't tell me what to pray for, it was a mystery. So I knew pray in other tongues. So I sat down in the chair, and I began to pray in other tongues. That's the prayer language that God's given me to pray in. I don't know what I'm saying unless He tells me, but I know I'm praying the very perfect will of God when I do. That's Romans 8, 26 and 27. And as I sat down to pray, I also know, pray, did that sound funny to anybody? That sound weird? And I think, wow. What was that guy just saying? What did it sound like? I don't know. I was just saying. French or something? I don't know. It was different, wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't English. Wasn't English, was it? But it means something to somebody somewhere. Somebody would understand that language. Just because we don't doesn't mean that somebody doesn't. And that's a legal form of prayer because it's a legal language. 1 Corinthians 13 says we also pray in angels' languages. I don't know what that sounds like. I never heard of angels pray before, talk before, you know, that I'm aware of, you know, in his language. Uh, but anyway, so I, I also know to pray through long enough till I hit like a note of victory in my belly, until I've, I've prayed everything through that I'm supposed to pray, till I've touched heaven, 
but i i didn't. i said, man, i got to go. i gave him about two minutes of lip service praying in other other tongues i got up to leave. i got to the doorway and the holy spirit says in my heart sit back down. you're not done yet. i was like, oh my gosh so i sat down in the chair and as i sit down in the chair in english i hear one word i hear buford and i'm like, oh my gosh my uncle buford he's in lenore city and he works on houses the man must be about to fall off the roof and God's got me up here praying for him. So then, I didn't pray in tongues anymore. I started praying in English for my uncle. And I said, Lord, please protect my uncle. Lord, help him to not fall off the roof of a house. Lord, help him if he's uh, feeling sad or depressed. You know, watch out for his wife, my Aunt Lucia. So, then I go on down the hallway thinking I'm done. I sit down in the locker room and I'm putting my shoes on. And a fellow named Steve, across the room there, hollers over at Mark. And he says, Mark, is that your mom I saw you talking to in the bleachers on the way down here? And Mark's like, yeah, how do you know that's my mom? He says, well, y'all look so much alike. Well, Mark's roommate, Sean, you know, mama jokes and all, cracking on him. And he says, hey, over to Steve, don't be talking about my woman like that. I'm already going to have to go off on that man that's up there sitting next to her and talk about Mark's mom. And Steve's like, yeah, is that your dad up there sitting next to your mom? And he's like, yeah. He said, what's your dad's name? He said, Buford. I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm freaking out. I, I was praying for the wrong guy. I was down the hall three minutes ago praying in tongues for somebody named Buford. I thought it was my uncle. So I went running outside of the hallway. I was like, Lord, oh, my gosh, cancel all those prayers for Uncle Buford. I had the wrong guy. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Stick those pulp prayers in a bowl somewhere up there for Uncle Buford and use them later when he needs them. I'm going to pray for Mark's dad now. And so then, to the best of my ability in English, I began to pray for Mark's dad. Can you see how powerful this is to be able to pray out secrets and mysteries and, and things you wouldn't know to pray for? Can you imagine the power? What, what was Mark's dad spared from? Because we prayed that day right there like that. Who knows? how his life was affected. How many of you would like somebody to be able to pray for you when they would never have known to pray for you, but because they were Holy Ghost filled and spoke in tongues, they knew to pray? Anybody not want that? You ever been in a dangerous situation and said, man, I wish somebody was praying for me right now. I don't have time to pray for myself. Well, Shia, She's up in her room, got the door locked, mind her own business. And she's praying this language. And all of a sudden, she sees his face. And now she knows, whatever she's praying, he's going to be all right. Because she's praying in tongues. And, and, and right at that very moment, somebody's trying to rob him or something. Or maybe he's struggling taking a test at school, and he can't remember the answers. But all of a sudden, the answers come to him. All of a sudden, they decide not to rob him, and they run off. Or all of a sudden, maybe the police come to help him, or, or Adam comes and sees him, Pastor Adam comes and sees him. Because she was praying, that was possible. But you see, if she doesn't pray in other tongues, and she's just by going by what her head knows, she has no idea he's taking the test. She don't know if he's getting robbed or not. She's trying to take care of her own self. You see what I'm saying? You see how powerful that is? Anybody not want the ability to do that? Who does want the ability to do that? Yeah. All right. You guys want to pray? You ready to pray? I got 26 reasons, but we ain't got to go through all those. I think you're ready right now. All right, let's pray. First of all, who in here wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Hey, let me say it this way. Who in here has ever heard of speaking in other tongues before? It's the Holy Ghost speaking. Holy Ghost speaking. Anybody here uh, ever spoke in tongues before? Raise your hand high. One, two, three, four, five. So you see, all the adults have spoken in other tongues in this room. No. <laughs> well, no, all the adults and then... Yeah. A young person, okay, soon to be adult, not rushing you along too fast. 
Take your time. Anybody nervous about this? Anybody think it's weird? Anybody want to say, hey, I don't know. Anybody? Hey, it's the same thing in here, yo. Be real. If you are scared of it, say, yo, I don't scared understand it. Speaking in tongues, like, yo, I don't understand it. I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Earlier, some people raised their hand and said they wanted it, but now he asks again, nobody wants it. I mean, I, so, I want I mean, it, but I don't understand. I mean, yeah. You don't understand how do you speak it or yeah. what? What do you I don't you understand? understand how to. Oh, like if I say, like I know how to do all that, like what he was doing, just like, faking it. You know how to fake it. No. Yeah. yeah, I had to fake it good too. <laughs> I know how to fake it. But it's not about faking. It's about faking it until you have it. All right. Oh, Turn you want to know how do you really have it? Yeah, how do you really do this stuff? Okay. When you're not faking it. Turn with me back to your Bibles in Acts chapter two oh. and verse four. Oh. Acts chapter two and verse four. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So what we're saying to you is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, when you're saved, you've got a measure of the Holy Spirit living in you. If you died, you'd go right to heaven. Okay? But what we're saying is, is we want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, you've been trying to live your Christian life on a measure of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord told you, don't do that. You need to live your life having been totally baptized, immersed in the Holy Spirit. So you're trying to live Christianity without the power. Sin and temptation overpowers you because you have had a lack of power in your life. Do you want me to go around the room and read your mail? you want me to go around and tell you what you've been dealing with? Female, yeah. female. you want me to go around and tell you things? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I know you do. You saw me yeah. on the hill that one day. How did you know to tell that lady that? You were with me, right, when we went up the hill? Talk about her boyfriend. She'd been in an argument with that guy. Yeah, I remember that. That's the Holy Ghost giving me the power to be able to tell you things about you that I, you know I don't know. Okay? That's power from on high. I could not do that till I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Until I was baptized and speaking in other tongues, I couldn't do that. Now... It's as easy as falling off a log. It's easier than riding a bike. Because I'm immersed and I'm filled with His presence. And this is how. First of all, you receive. Okay? You receive the Holy Spirit. See, He's already been given. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 where we've been reading, that sound of a mighty rushing wind, the Holy Spirit invaded this earth. And he's been here for 2,000 years. Okay? So we're not going to ask to be filled because we don't ask for what we've already got. We're going to receive the infilling. He's already here in this room. You're born again. He's already living in your belly, living in your heart. Okay? Inside of you, when you say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. He's going to rise up within you. And the scripture says in Acts 2 and verse 4, that they all began to speak. You're going to speak. You're going to have to move your lips, your vocal cords by faith. Are you listening? You're going to move your lips. You're going to move your tongues by faith. The Spirit of God, it says, is going to enable you or give you the utterance or give you the words. You're going to hear words from heaven. And you're going to give voice to them. That's filling you up to overflowing. God's not going to give you a snake or a stone or something weird. He's a good heavenly father. He, he's going to give you the baptism that is good and perfect. It's a gift from the father above. In your belly, there's going to be a warmth. It's just going to be like a, a, a warm feeling inside. And rising up within you is going to come the utterance or the words or the things to say. You're going to, by faith, move your tongues, move your lips, move your vocal cords. And you're going to give voice. That's right. You can get filled right there. You don't have to wait for 
pray for you. You're going to give voice to these words. Okay? When you do, you're going to be praying mysteries and secrets, visions and dreams. You're going to be praying for relatives. You're going to be saving people's lives. You're going to be protecting yourself. You're going to be increasing your intelligence. These are just some of the things that happen. But more than anything, God is going to become more real to you. The Bible is going to be easier to read. Life is going to change for you in a good way. Things that were difficult are not going to be so difficult anymore. Sharing your faith with others is going to get so much easier. You're going to know what to say when you never would have known what to say. Because you've gotten filled with His presence. We're not seeking tongues. We're seeking the Holy Spirit. But, but as a result of that, He's going to give you the languages, the words to speak. Some get a few syllables. Some get sentences. Some get a whole language. Some get 10 or 12 languages. Some people fall on the floor. Some people stay stoned like a statue. Some people cry. Some people laugh and raise their hands. It's different for everybody. However it happens for you is how God wanted it to happen for you. You are unique, and the way you receive is unique. But the, the